years of political and economic decadence may have placed Nigeria in a very poor position in the provision of health care to her citizenry. This is evident in the World Health Organization WHO ranking Nigeria 197 out of 200 nations it covers. The high maternal and child mortality rate, death of hospital facilities and skilled personnel, as well as exodus of qualified Nigerian medical personnel from the country, may have also contributed immensely. But, despite the socio-economic and political challenges facing the nation, the present administration has shown greater determination to delivering its health transformation promises to move the country to a higher frontier in the Committee of Nations. As we x-rayed in our first edition on the Nigerian health system in perspective, the nation's health sector is rising through the ashes of its past doldrums like the proverbial phoenix. This is the era of the action push agenda for the transformation of the health sector. The action push means we want to do more doing than talking. We want to really walk our talk as it were. And now we're implementing. We have very practical. Once it's a good idea, we run with it. So that justifies increased appreciable expenditure in health. 53 years after independence, the Nigerian health sector still struggles with the provision of basic health services for its teeming population, now estimated at over 170 million. The health sector is still a labor-intensive handicraft industry in spite of advances in healthcare technology. It is more complicated than in the past years, needing a more coordinated approach and policy strategy to create a health system that ensures Nigerians enjoy better health care. We want a health system that is responsive to the needs of Nigeria. And um, that can only, only happen if primary care is functional. With what we've made, the progress we've made so far, and with the initiative and innovation we've put in place, we're repositioning primary care as the key to unlocking the potential in the health sector. Cuba is one of the most enviable nations in terms of healthcare. Affordable healthcare, let me put it that way. Why are we not looking in that direction and saying to them, come help? Well, we are saying that. They're there and they're helping many nations. Nigeria now needs to look that way too and seek help. Top grade specialists. So they use our well-equipped hospitals with private investment, private discipline and a good workforce to deliver care here to 170 million Nigerians instead of expecting them to board airlines to get out of here for medical treatment. So we want to ensure that there's regulation. We want to ensure that hospitals and facilities, health facilities are monitored to ensure that standards are maintained. And if standards are maintained, Nigerians enjoy mandatory health insurance, the facilities are there, then it's only then that we can say that Nigerians will surely have good health that is not only affordable, but is qualitative. While it is agreed that some of the current challenges will not just go away through wishful thinking, there is a need to aggressively tackle headlong the health challenges that continuously turn out high negative indices for the nation. For instance, nearly 15% of Nigerian children do not survive their fifth birthday. About 11% of pregnant women may lose their lives during pregnancy or childbirth. However, the current administration is working assiduously to ensure there is a drastic reduction in these health indices. In our country, only 35% of women have access to skilled attendant when they want to have a baby. 35%. The rest, 65%, either deliver themselves or they are delivered by people who have no business being near them. And that's why we're losing women, countless of them, on a daily basis. It's not rocket science. And that's why some of us pushed and pushed and pushed almost blackmail people for the midway free service scheme to take off. And you can see it's already bringing down maternal mortality in the country. And that's why I commend government for having that frame of mind to agree to implement that scheme. One major reason why women die during pregnancy in this country is that they don't have access to facilities. 
and even if they have access to facilities, when they go to those facilities, the human resource to ensure that the benefit from skilled attendance at the point of delivery may not be there. And even if the human resource is there, when complication comes out of the, that pregnancy, uh, to refer the woman from a primary care center to a secondary health facility, either there is no transportation, or even if they go to the secondary health facility, there is no human resource to handle the complication. So the MCH Shwapi Mama Project that was conceived is to you know, tackle these challenges that I've highlighted. The government will ensure that at least there's one health facility in each ward. We're not talking about local government now. It doesn't matter whether that health facility is private. It doesn't matter whether it is a mission uh, a hospital or clinic. It doesn't matter whether that facility is owned by the state government or local government. It doesn't matter whether it's owned by federal government. But we are providing physical access. In a bid to reduce the high maternal and child mortality rates in Nigeria, the nation has developed an ambitious and comprehensive initiative to scale up access to essential primary health services and commodities for Nigerian women and children. The objective is save 1 million lives by 2015 through equitable and increased access to and utilization of quality cost-effective basic health services. At the launch of the initiative, President Goodluck Jonathan reaffirmed Nigeria's commitment to saving lives as the ultimate goal and yardstick for measuring success in the health sector and by extension, a demonstration of one of the dividends of democracy. Consistent with the human capital development pillar of his administration's transformation agenda for Nigeria. The MDGs themselves were not necessarily to completely eradicate any disease. Take, for instance, maternal uh, mortality. Wherever you were at the turn of the century in 2000, by 2015, you are supposed to have reduced it by three quarters. So, does it mean that the other one quarter we are happy seeing them? No. Even if it's only one woman out of our 170 million population that dies from pregnancy related problems, it's still a shame to all of us. We must get to a situation where no woman should die just because she's pregnant. As the Director General, United Nations Population Fund, and one time Minister of Health in Nigeria, Professor Babatunde Oshotimehi succinctly put it, the nation can save 6 million lives by just focusing on some usually low-cost but high-impact medicines. Family planning alone can reduce one-third of maternal deaths. Together with these low-cost maternal medicines, most maternal deaths could be averted. If you are going to prevent VVF, family planning is one of the tools. Yeah, okay, because if it's only when the woman gets pregnant that she will develop uh, cephalopelvic disproportion obstructed labor and subsequently prolonged obstructed labor. If a woman is not pregnant, she will not come down with obstetric fistula. So family planning is an important preventive tool to, for us. And we're able to go to the communities too. We don't just wait for the women to come here for family planning services. We take it to meet the women, in the market, in the various communities and so on and so forth. I want to commend the Federal Minister of Health, especially the Honorable Minister of Health, Professor Chuku, who made sure that government appropriated $3 million for commodities purchase and distribution for family planning. It's one of the most important hallmarks of this administration. And this is the first time in the history of this country this sort of gesture has been made. Now, things we didn't do before we are doing. It's under President Jonathan that Nigeria for the first time have started spending money on family planning. For the first time since 1960 or since 1914, Nigeria has never spent a couple of its own until 2011, because when I came, I said, ah, why is it not in our budget? I discussed with the president. President, of course, is someone who seriously believes in family planning first as a strategy for safe motherhood. A woman who spaces her pregnancies does better, is healthier. It is heartwarming to note the improvement in some of the health indices. The maternal mortality ratio has reduced significantly from 545 per 100,000 live births about six years ago to 224 in 2012, although more still needs to be done to further crash the figure. Available report also indicates a drastic reduction in maternal mortality during and after labor in any of the health centers where participants on the midwife service scheme or SHOP have been deployed. The subsidy reinvestment program on maternal and child health 
under this administration has seen the rehabilitation of over 500 health facilities, provision of boreholes, commodities and conditional cash transfers, an incentive designed to encourage pregnant women to attend antenatal service and report for baby delivery at the health facilities. So that when a woman comes to the facility, uh, she benefits from skilled attendance at the point of delivery and also benefit from uh, professional care during pregnancy. Uh, we also provide mama kits to the facilities so that uh, when a pregnant woman comes to the facility, um, if the husband does not have the well with her, that would not be an excuse uh, for her to, not to benefit from skilled attendance. So we provide it uh, in the facility. You know. In a recent grant from the Shopee, we are working together to ensure that those primary health care centers where the midwifery uh, scheme is working makes it easier for us to put our PMCT programs there so that you know the issue of human resources is resolved. They are also our lead in terms of the curriculum for AIDS intervention and PMC intervention at the level of the primary health care. In the year 2011, the federal government of Nigeria established the National Center for Disease Control targeted towards outreach, health promotion and disease prevention activities designed to support sustainable, country-owned HIV prevention, treatment and care programs and also strengthen the country's laboratories, disease surveillance and monitoring as well as evaluation systems. One of my creations now in my tenure was the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. This is something that never existed before until I became minister. But today, we have the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. And I'm also happy that the white paper from our Royal Science Committee also finally approved that uh, the NCDC should be a prostatal under the Federal Ministry. So it's a big achievement. We are the first in Africa to start it. And it's going very well to the extent that the African Union has now said they even want a center for disease control for the entire Africa. So there's now not going to just be Nigerian center for disease control, but there's going to be African center for disease control, So, which is a great achievement. We are being helped enormously by the U.S. Center for Disease Control, particularly in the area of capacity building, with our work on HIV AIDS, with our work on polio, we are collaborating all. In addition, President Goodluck Jonathan in 2013 inaugurated an ultra-modern public health in vitro diagnostic control laboratory in Lagos, the first of its kind in Nigeria. This infrastructure will enable Nigeria effectively regulate public health in vitro diagnostics, out of which 50% are said to be fake, expired or substandard in the open market. This singular gesture will help the Nigerian health sector accurately and definitively diagnose the cause of an ailment. And this is what the transformation agenda of Mr. President kicked off by having the enabling public health in vitro diagnostic laboratory of council that was set up by government and Mr. President commissioned it on the 5th of September 2013 in Lagos. And that, was the, that is the first of such a laboratory in West Africa. These laudable interventions in the health sector have started yielding the desired results. Recently, Nigeria was certified as a Guinea worm free nation. We are happy that the eradication of Guinea worm disease in Nigeria and Nigeria's certification by the World Health Organization took place under your own administration. And I now have the honor to present to you the formal notification for Nigeria international certification as a Guinea worm free country signed personally by the WHO Director General. We are especially delighted that this milestone coincides with the period as we are marking our centenary as a nation. It is certainly a centenary gift to this country. I'm so happy because this is a war actually we started in 1988. And uh, many ministers have come, gone through it, many directors of public health and so on and so forth. Uh, but when I came on board, uh, we are beginning to begin to enjoy the interruption that are taking place in Nigeria. But 
you need to do at least three years without a single case for WHO to even agree to come and begin to assess you. So we worked hard, improved our surveillance system. When we did more than three years, I had to invite WHO and say, look, this time you should come and certify us. Though eventually it took them four years to come. Uh, but last year, uh, they spent uh, three full weeks in Nigeria. There's no place they did not go to. It's not a matter of staying in Abuja and certifying. They go to places. They will ask people questions. They will ask the ordinary person. The person doesn't even know who they are and what they're asking. So in, just in case you actually had it, but we didn't know, you will say you had it. So they will note it and investigate. And after three weeks of moving around the whole country, I think they were satisfied. And that's why they gave that report to WHO. And then finally, in December, WHO formally certified Nigeria. The offering is a major achievement for President Jonathan. On HIV AIDS, Nigeria has made appreciable progress in the management of the condition and prevention of new infections. Today, there are so many testing sites and more are still springing up. Exposure to HIV information has significantly increased with voluntary testing and less stigmatizing attitude towards people living with HIV and AIDS. About 10 years ago, Nigeria was seeing the worst of HIV AIDS in the country. The prevalence of 5.8%, lots of people dying, uh, hospitals all clogged up with people who were sick with AIDS and all these opportunistic infections. I can say clearly today that we have moved from there. Very recently, we have been testing a lot of people in the country. In fact, last year, we tested over 580 something thousand people. And there was a remarkably lowering of the prevalence. We have, in fact, we had uh, about 1% or thereabout. We went to the most uh, burdened states, the 12 plus 1 states, which we refer to, which are responsible for 70% of the body. And we tested about 35,000. And the result was 2.5%. One may argue that we needed to do a scientific framework of sampling to ensure that we get the right figures. And we're just about doing that. All this shows clearly that HIV incidence, prevalence is coming down. We're also happy to note that stigma, which used to be extremely high, it is still high, but much, much, much reduced. People with AIDS are living much longer. They are producing children that are not infected. Uh, but that doesn't mean we don't have challenges, but there's a tremendous progress. To such an extent now that we are even talking about when shall we end AIDS. The Nigerian Prevention of Mother-to-Child Transmission, PMTCT, of HIV program is one of the health sector's responses to the HIV AIDS epidemic in the country. This initiative has been integrated into the antenatal program to ensure no child is born in Nigeria with the HIV virus. The target that we're all looking for from WHO and UNAIDS is that by 2015, 90% of all the women uh, should go through those interventions. In this country, we have somewhere around between six and eight million women who are pregnant every year. That means that we need to test all those women. And out of this, our estimate shows that somewhere about 230,000 of them will be HIV positive. We need to give them those life-saving drugs that I talked about, that can block transmission. So that our women that will go for attendant care will be counseled, tested, and one positive treated. In that way, we will save the life of the mother and also prevent transmission from the mother to child. Nigerians, regardless of their location, deserve qualitative and sustainable health care that will be accessible to them anytime and anywhere. To this end, the Jonathan administration introduced the Universal Health Coverage Program, which will be driven through the National Health Insurance Scheme. It is estimated that less than 15 million Nigerians are currently covered by any type of health insurance package. With universal health coverage in place, 35.2 million Nigerians would be benefiting by December 2015. When we came in, we realized the fact that there is no way for us to actually leapfrog our achievements in the healthcare financing without delving into the informal sector. Because all our efforts since 2005 had been had only yielded 2.8% coverage 
for Nigerians. And Mr. President has directed that we should hit 30% coverage by the end of 2015. And so, for us to achieve that, it means that we have to uh, go into the informal sector, and that is, that is what we are doing now. The second game changer is this universal health coverage, which Mr. President recently held a, a presidential summit on. These two, once Nigerians get it off, Nigerians will begin to enjoy what other countries have been enjoying for some time now. This particular edition will not be complete without touching on the achievements made so far by NAFDAQ. The fight against fake and counterfeit drugs has assumed a new dimension. Today, consumers of regulated products can buy their product with a certain degree of assurance that what they are consuming is safe and wholesome. The introduction of cutting-edge technologies like the TrueScan, mobile authentication service MASS, are ingenious ways NAFDAQ has employed to detect fake and counterfeit drugs. You know, initially what we used to do is do the normal physical inspection where we find we close the market or close the shop and then prosecute the offenders. But we are now using the benefit of um, IT, information and communication technology ICT. So now the secret is that even you, the consumer, can actually, even while you're at the pharmacy, check whether what you're buying is fake or is real. We have required that from the 1st of July this year, all anti-malaria drugs and all antibiotic drugs must have the mask, that's the mobile authentication service on them, that allows more than 80 million Nigerian uh, consumers who have access to cell phones to text uh, authenticate the medicine before they pay at the cashier. With this, we hope that when it has become fully operational, we believe that we'll be able to wipe out completely fake anti-malaria drugs in this country and also fake antibiotic drugs, the most often counterfeited medicines in this country. For those who may still be contemplating accessing health care that is vastly available in Nigeria, it is important to stress that virtually all prevailing diseases can be treated in the country. For instance, Stem cell transplant for sickle cell disease is available at the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, Benin, Edo State. Most of the federal tertiary hospitals now have geriatric and cancer testing and treatment units. Kidney transplant is available at the University College Hospital, Ibadan, Oyo State. Heart surgeries are available at the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital, Itukozala, Enugu State. University Teaching Hospital, Zaria Kaduna State, UCH Ibadan, Gariki Hospital, Abuja, and hosts of other public and private hospitals in Nigeria. Let me say clearly, there is absolutely no medical condition that cannot be handled locally. If, in any case, there is anyone that is so complex, what you do is that there are people from diaspora, like the foundations, they come in three or four times a year and they, they, they help us with such a bad case. We have latest uh, models of all the equipment that you need to do open heart surgery. I mean, facilities that the international community, that uh, the international faculty that come here, they feel very comfortable, comfortable working with it and it's comparable to whatever they have uh, out there. The Nigerian person, the national, this transformation that is going on around us, especially also in the health sector and in many other sectors, they need to log on to it. How are we going to transform Nigeria if we don't invest in Nigeria? If we take all our money out, it won't work. We are all, the people will keep going at a faster pace than we, we could ever. Regarding health in particular, we worry about maternal death and quality of delivery, quality of pregnancy care. We've got a professor in obstetrics from Sheffield. He's partnering with us, training our people, coming every now and again, two, three months, he must be here. Stay with us, make sure our standards are kept. We've got what you call the keyhole surgery. Nobody opens tummies now unless they must. They go through keyhole, it will look like you've never had an operation in your life. There are Nigerians who, can, who are world-class experts in this. Every two or three months, we bring our own experts, Nigerians in the diaspora, to come and work with us, train our people, operate on Nigerians, and instead of them having to go abroad. What am I saying? This is where Nigeria should be now. Although the progress made so far is gradual, it is steady. 
and if sustained, Nigeria will soon be Africa's medical hub where everyone can access affordable and quality medical care. Success already recorded will require sustained action across all spheres of the nation's health sector. Steps taken towards achieving goals 4, 5 and 6 of the Millennium Goals should be accelerated. With these, meaningful developments and stability in the health sector is inevitable. That way, Nigeria can truly become one with the saying, a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Join us again next week as we take a look at public-private partnership in the health sector. Good night.